I'm Quinto from Eskinote and this uh, short video is uh, to show you our new product which is called Master Limiter. It is actually a brick we were missing in our range which is the last step to go from your mix to the file that you are going to distribute through physical uh, media or uh, on the internet for example. This is a quite simple interface uh, and it's a limiter but it contains uh, um, a few extremely powerful yet simple to use uh, features that I'm going to show you. I in this uh, project you have the raw mix of the uh, song, the stereo mix. Mm, it's a song from our friend Francesco Galletti and it's called Crazy Over You. This song ha has been mastered uh, in a professional uh, mastering studio and s I'll be switching it to that masters mm, to, sh to have some reference you know, while, while listening as shown with the features. Uh, here is the other, the, the, the master. One, two! I need a break from ending all this cracked bones that you left on me. Okay, <clears throat> so we have um, starting from left to right, we have the classical um, parameters for a limiter, which are a fast release setting, a slower release setting and the width of the RMS window of the detector. So these three parameters um, set how the detector analyzes the incoming stereo signal. You can set the width of the window from 170 milliseconds up to 1700. And then you can separately uh, set a fast release from 50 to 500 milliseconds and a slow release from uh, 500 to up to two, two seconds actually. Uh, the behavior of the limiter uh, is uh, dynamic because it m uh, continuously changes uh, the um, value of the release uh, depending on the content of the signal. And you can see here on the left a bar showing how the release, the actual time constant, is being moved from, from, from one value to the other one. Yes, I need a break from ending all this crack. There is another line you can see here sometimes. Yes, I need which is uh, an internal control that sets the time constant slower, uh, always between these two values, depending on the content of low frequency in the signal, because a uh, too quick, too fast uh, release time constant uh, could um, compromise the quality of the decay of a lower frequency uh, range. So uh, the limiter internally change the value dep also depending on the content of low frequency. A couple of uh, more parameters related to these first three parameters uh, are the look ahead which actually sets the uh, detector to look from uh, nothing up to 40 milliseconds ahead in time to uh, predict um, peaks, strong and high peaks, and a release hold. Um, if set 
to zero, it's a normal behavior. So after the peak has passed and the level starts going down, uh, the release starts. Uh, if uh, it's set to something more than zero, up to these 40 milliseconds, uh, when the peak has passed, the mm, action of the limiter is still kept for this length of time uh, before mm, restoring the, uh, the mm, unit gain. So this couple of parameters actually work well together. This is how uh, we are using it to set them here and couple to the same value. So you have the detector looking 20 milliseconds before the real signal, so ahead in time, and holding the ceiling, we, we can see the, oh, the maximum um, uh, action of the limiter, the maximum gain reduction for this amount of time. So this is the core delimiter. To set it, the, probably the first parameter is the ceiling of the signal you want to obtain. Uh, this is uh, the maximum absolute uh, level the brick wall uh, can accept and output. Uh, we are used to set it to one half dB here. Why a margin? Um, I'm sure the most of all know, but just in case, uh, even if you are mm, limiting the single samples in your signal with uh, this limiter, you have so-called intersample values that can move beyond the absolute level of the samples. So one easy and effective way of preventing your listeners mm, DA converters from clipping is uh, getting some margin. So for example, one half of a dB here uh, compared to zero dB, which is a zero dB d, um, FS, no? So it, this is set in dB FS because it's compared to the maximum absolute possible in digital, which is zero dB FS. Okay, a couple more parameters are the gain, the input gain of the, of the limiter. Yes, I need a break from ending all this. And the knee of the limiting curve. This is also the set for the threshold because the threshold, the compression, the limiting threshold, so the, um, the level, an input level beyond which the limiter starts acting and reducing the gain, um, uh, the need starts from the threshold, okay? So this sets the uh, threshold as minus 14.8 dB from zero dBFS, not from ceiling, but from absolute zero dBFS, and uh, has a smooth knee that goes up to uh, zero dBFS. So you can set the knee from 3 dB up to 20 dB. We are used here to keep it to quite high values because it is uh, usually is more transparent. Yes, I need a break from ending all these cracks of bones that you left on me. Then you have the real power of this uh, uh, master limiter. Uh, you can see a couple of uh, uh, names, a couple of features here. The first one is the pre-flattening uh, process. It, it is like a set of, uh, um, it's, a, it's, it's a frequency dependent effect actually. It, it flattens in um, frequency, so if you, uh, if your mix has some kind of uh, uh, balance which is not perfect, this, uh, this uh, effect, this feature could help a lot. Let's have a listen. Yes, I need a break from ending all these cracks of bones that you left on me. The other feature is the smoothing feature, which acts before everything and uh, acts uh, as a set of compressor um, with, um, which are interacting 
and um, make the level, the overall level of the stereo mix uh, smoother, uh, so it's uh, better received by the limiter. Let's have a listen. Yes, I need a break from ending all these cracks and bones that you left on me. And everybody knows, and everybody goes, it takes some time. Okay, so you have uh, two more special features. One is the, the harshing feature, which is a dynamic control on the harsher, uh, on the harsh region, of, uh, frequency region. No? So it could um, be effective as a de or an overall harshness reducer. <laughs> Fake as he can be You make me feel so insecure Slip in your doubts in me And everybody knows And everybody goes And everybody It can be very transparent actually This one is a uh, quite special because it's like a mid-side focus control. It's um, again like everything inside this effect um, <clears throat> dynamic feature and uh, it um, changes the balance uh, between mid and side components so the sum of left, left and right and their difference um, to keep um, the movement of the stereo image more in focus. Slip in your doubts in me And everybody knows And everybody goes It takes time to get over And lingers though it does This game it got me bored Cause in the end it won't Succeed in what it has to go ever after long I'm crazy over you Then we have the meter uh, with a couple of uh, peak meters for left and right signal, a couple of uh, air mass levels and their relative uh, the distances that show you the uh, dynamics you are keeping in the, in the master. <laughs> Then you have the action of the pre-flattening feature, the action of the smoothing feature, and the action of the actual limit. <laughs> Then you have dithering for 6-bit or 24-bit output. And uh, the last extremely handy feature is the LUFS meter. You can reset it by simply clicking on its bar. And it keeps um, uh, computing the level, the resulting level, in a moving uh, average window. So you can just a click on the bar when this song is uh, at the at your starting point when you want to start measuring and then uh, keep it running until you are satisfied because you have spanned the the right range of the of the song Need a break from any
Hand raise the open leg. 